Hello everybody, Flamin' Shark back with another video. As you can see, my hair's a mess because it's the morning. Uh, and this is one of those waking up and then recording situations that we're doing here. So um, I'm starting to been doing a little bit of that lately. Um, you know, just kind of not exclusively recording at night. Um, and like I said, I don't usually have a lot of time to record in the afternoon. It's usually either in the morning or at night when I get most of my recording done. Usually late at night, but hey, you know, we're, we're mixing it up a little lately. So in the process, my hair is an absolute, um, I wanted to say bird's nest. Yeah. For whatever reason, like I wanted to, I was like chicken's nest. I was like, no, it'd be like a chicken coop. So I just could not think of the word bird's nest. Uh, nonetheless, I, uh, I am excited though. We are jumping into episode four of the Danganronpa 3 future arc, and we are up jumping into episodes three and four of the despair arc. So this reaction is going to go, uh, despair three, future four, despair four. That's our set for this video. I'm excited to see obviously two episodes of despair after getting only one despair because we had a two future, one despair last time, and now we have a one future, two despair this time, which means I'm going to get more of my Danganronpa 2 cast, and I'm always really excited to see all of them. I'm curious if, given the fact that we're going to get through two more episodes of despair, I'm curious if we are going to witness the arrival of Junko and or Mukuro in this set, and I'm also curious if we're going to... Um, Kind of to coincide with potentially Junko's arrival, I am wondering if we are going to see the beginnings of things going wrong for the class. Like, obviously, inevitably, something's going to happen to Chiaki at some point. That seems all but confirmed. Uh, and what the other thing that we can expect um, is a situation where not only, like I said, the Chiaki thing, but I'm also expecting a situation... Um, there's definitely going to be a turn, and I'm curious if it's going to, if we're going to kind of see it individually, or it's going to be more collectively with Junko kind of, to some extent, winning them all over at once with her own nonsense. It's going to be interesting, though. I'm very excited for it. The other thing that's going to be interesting about all of this, for sure, is um, seeing how Hajime plays into all of it and seeing how, um, uh, I believe it's, uh, Natsumi or Natsume. Um, I don't have her name written down, but, uh, Fuyihiko's sister who, uh, I don't believe was ever named in DR2, but, uh, we did get her name at the end of the previous despair episode, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm really excited to see that because we know that's also going to play into this because we know that she's going to get murdered um, and that plays into the events of, uh, Twilight Syndrome murder case. So I'm expecting those events to potentially just outright be in this anime. Um, the fact that they gave like an end credit scene to, uh, the arrival of Fuyuhiko's sister definitely feels like a setup for all the events of Twilight Syndrome murder case, uh, actually happening in the context of DR3, which is really cool. If it does, that's something that I'd love to see play out and, and and see the the kind of issues you know bad things happening the issues bubbling and and, and again how Junko manipulates that situation to uh disparify the uh the members of that potato uh should be really good obviously in the future arc we only have one more episode of future arc we left off kind of on a cliffhanger with um um Give me a second. I'm just going to familiarize myself with all these names again, because there are a lot of names to think about in this damn fucking story. And, uh, like I said, I have not really memorized outside of, outside of, like, the big two, as I've dubbed them. I haven't really memorized any of these names. So I'm just trying to, um... Trying to just get all of these names as well as I can before I talk about it, and I'm still going to be looking over here anyways. But, uh... Yeah, we have, so obviously we have the Kyosuke thing with Makoto. That was kind of the big cliffhanger. That's what I was going to talk about initially, but there are a bunch of other things going on with other characters. There's um, the uh, Kim Kimura, uh, Psycho. She's having, oh, that's funny. Her name's Psycho. I didn't even think about that. that I, I think I only caught that now. Um, 
but uh, she's having a situation with um, Ando, with Ruruka, and, like, they're, like, having issues, and then Ruruka also has her boy with her, um, I believe, Sonosuke, I believe, being the, uh, I believe it's the blacksmith, that's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the he is the sleepy boy. That is the that is the guy that hangs out with um with Ruruka and like I said, uh fucking fucking uh Kimura is the one that is going after her. So, you know, that whole nonsense with uh that happening and, and there's just a lot going on, of course. And it's gonna be interesting to see uh what you know, kind of where this uh, transitions and where that goes with the future arc. But this uh, this episode is going to be more centered around our DR2 cast because we are focusing on two Despair Arc episodes. So uh, I'm going to primarily... That is our primary focus this episode. So uh, we might as well, uh, first and foremost, just see how, uh, how everything goes with Chisa's class. So let's not waste any more time. And let's jump in to episode... Three of the despair arc of Danganronpa three in three, two, one, and play. There was a lot of threes in that intro. I was about to say that didn't really look like any part of Hope's Peak that I'm familiar with, but it being ha Hajime makes sense. Part of the like reserve course segment of the school. All right, we're building up the Izuru stuff again. Mm-hmm. When he first arrived, that's actually the beginning of... I assume that's supposed to be kind of like the beginning of uh, year two. Mm, no, 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 okay, this is more recent. I guess that makes sense, because he has the he has suit on, not, not the outfit that he showed up with. That's crazy, he just walks by all of the rest of the DR2 cast. That's crazy. Ah! Oh, I can't wait to see this all come together. It's one of those weird things where it's like, I think the reason I'm excited for the DR2, the Despair arc, is like purely just like fan service. Like, it's, it, it's so much of it is built on the fact that I know all the characters. I'm not even sure if the Despair arc's necessarily been better than the Future arc, but it's just, like I said, the familiarity with all the characters. And not only the familiarity with the characters, but a lot, some of my favorite characters in the series were DR2 characters. As much as I love Junko and Byakuya and, you know, Mukuro, every little bit of Mukuro we've gotten has made me love her more and more from the, like, um, auxiliary content. God. It is really funny how when Nagito is despairing, he almost looks happy. Because, you know, his his despair is ironically kind of poor hope in the weirdest, most fucked up sort of way. That was still crazy, the end of the OP, the first time I watched it. Okay, this actually is a totally different build. Yes, I love it. I love the silhouettes. No no need to even animate them. That shit always cracks me up in uh, anime when they do that. Yep, the old man. Tengon. Yep, there's the Fuyuhiko sister. I think they're even playing the, like, fucking... The soundtrack's from, I think, uh, Twilight Syndrome Murder Case. Damn. Wow. Wow, the ultimate little sister is crazy. Yes. The Kuzuryu clan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. She just... She really... It did make sense. I, the way that it, she was described, that she really did love Fuyuhiko in her own weird way, but... Aww. Damn. Interesting. It's interesting to see. So these two are potentially going to, like, come together to try and get into the main course. She thinks that at the worst, she's the best of this group. Oh my goodness. Why does this girl look familiar? Sato! I think she looks like a character from another series, but holy shit, this is Sato. Oh, the other piece to Twilight Syndrome murder case. Holy shit. Mm. Mm, yep. Fucking Mahiru simp. Oh my god, dude. Is Twilight Syndrome murder case happening this episode? This is like... They're really building this. Damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> Koizumi san. God, dude. Fucking Natsumi is such a bitch. I'm here for it, though. Damn, and she's stirring, dude. She's doing Junko's work for her. That's crazy. <laughs> Funnin with you? I don't even know what that I mean, I get it. Context clues, but I've never heard that term. Holy shit. The, the scary thing is she probably means it. She is a Kuzuryu, after all. Damn. Well, that's, that's a crazy thing to say in a reserve course. At, but you are reserved for it too, so there's a lot here. Why do I, I do get this weird feeling that, she, like, in a weird way, she might secretly, like, admire Mahiru. Because I feel like she might have really punched Sato, but didn't want to punch Mahiru. Now, to be fair, if she punched Mahiru, she would have probably gotten into way more trouble. Whereas, who knows if Hope Speak even would have cared that much if two reserve course students got into a fight. Aww. Dude, it's so... Dude, I fucking love that we're actually... You know, I didn't even put together that, like, Sato's gonna be a character. Yeah, I bet her photos did spread around the world, just not in the way that we thought. This definitely feels like a ship, which makes sense, because Mahiru always had those vibes. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, someone that tries to act like the ultimate little sister is a psycho. Yeah, that would just be way too suspicious, yeah, because that would kind of expose the relationship between Fuyuhiko and Peko. Yeah, and as we saw at DR2, she has a tendency to do things. That's sus. That's sus. Yeah, and behind a dark wall, even, even more so. God, fucking Ibuki, man. I don't know how I feel about her voice, actually. Most of these voices are perfect, I'm not gonna lie. Ibuki's Japanese voice? Interesting. I don't hate it, or anything, but it's... Most of them are, like, spot on, these voices. <laughs> And she's good enough at gaming to tell. Fucking Nintendo, man. Yo, I love the bonding between these two. 
Yeah, we talk about like the imprisonment of your talent of sorts. She probably have more fun playing them. Yeah. Like, I can appreciate them as someone who's not very good at them. But there is a certain, I think, skill level to some games where it's like, it's too hard, it's not worth the hassle for me, but... うん。人と関わって思い出を作ることで才能より大切な希望が生まれるんだって。うん。私は日野と君と遊べて楽しい。と思うよ。Do mm. the ships are real all over the place. This is a shipping episode. Arguably the best ship in the series, honestly, right here. え、またこれか。that ending of DR2 will live in my head forever. Hey! We're gonna win together. He, she, she, dude, Chiaki is literally the thing that's keeping all of these potatoes together. It's crazy. Dude, Chiaki is so obviously the, the, the thing, the part of the equation that needs to get taken out. That's not really how the real world works. That's honestly kind of yo 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 yo. That's interesting too because Hajime prevented. Yeah, Kuzurio from being hit. So I wonder again. They had that conversation. She's clearly like a sussy baka, but at the same time, I'm wondering if there's going to be a little bit of a kinship between these two. Yeah, they're about to talk, I think. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What does that make you? Honka Dokoroka, Yobigaka Moida Saluzo, or demo ino kayo. Urusai! It terrisho, but as she was tiny honka. Yeah, she. What's crazy is that it's. She really just wants to see her brother, I think, more than anything. That's the crazy thing, but she doesn't want to. She understands that she's a Kuzuru, so it's more complicated with than that. Mm -hmm. It's such a stupid title. It's like the two sides. It's like Kuzuryu and Nanami are representing like the two sides of hope and despair, or I guess despair and hope for Hajime. It's interesting. Also, I love the Hope's Peak brainwashing where there's ultimate talent and there's no talent. There's nothing in between. Hey, I love the shadows of, of uh, Fuyuhiko and Pekko there. The ultimate little sister. It's kind of a little bit like Pekko, but, you know, not quite the same. But it's in that same vein of, like, an ultimate support for him. That's crazy how much she loves her brother, though. That's going into some sussy territory for sure. Uh oh. Police it can't be good. Wait a minute. The tragedy of Hope Speak Academy? Oh no no no, this is this is this is Twilight Syndrome. This is Twilight Syndrome. Okay, I wasn't sure. When I first saw it, my initial I, I went Dongan Rampa Zero up in this bitch, but yeah, even though obviously. I just I don't know, something about that seemed really sudden. Okay, we're cooking with gas now. Alright, here we go. Twilight Syndrome murder case. That's crazy. Ah, the pink blood! And of course, Pekko on multiple levels is really pissed, right? Because she feels like it's her duty to protect Natsumi as well, but also how it hurts Fuyuhiko. 
ったのそのまさか確かに殺してやりたいとは思ったよあいつ真昼にひどいことをしようとしてたもしかしたらうん絶対に殺すつもりだった very, like, あいつとマヒルが写が写真部で一緒だった時二、mm. 人が言い合いになってそれを止めたら This is really cool too because this is something that was directly referenced in d o n g a n r a m p a 2 Like not even in like side material This is something that was directly talked about in the last main entry <laughs> Mm hmm. If for some reason you have not played Danganronpa 2 and are watching this, one, play, at least play one and two. Or, or watch my Let's Plays or something. Like, that's the one, like, I'd recommend more than just one and two, but those are like, I feel like the mandatory ones. Sato. But. Interesting. So Hajime is kind of investigating this a little bit. What are you talking about? 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 What are あいつには才能がなかったかもしれないでも違う違う違う違う I love the purple eyes and oh the despair is overwhelming her the guilt ああ、えー、死んだクズリュウのためにもお前らは元気に学校生活を先生佐藤さんはああ連絡はないな遅刻じゃないか、hmm. 遅刻なんかじゃなかった。Yep. 次の日も、次の日も、佐藤は学校に来なかった。Mm-hmm. そして次の日、okay. 佐藤の遺体が。Yeah, okay, they're moving fast here. We're, we're, I feel like we're kind of blitzing through this, but at the same time, again, We've experienced this in DR2 in like the weird, like, pseudo video game deal. Mm. Holy shit. Uh. Oh shit! Holy fuck! It's the boy, um. Wait! Wait, 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 wait. それにショックを受けた同級生も死んじまった話はそれでおしまいだふざけるなそんなの面倒ごとをさっさと終わらせようとしてるんだから yeah, the of the of the そう、これは一つの中なんて会話いくらでもいいんだ So I'm assuming based on the way this is all being framed that Well, yeah, I mean Yeah, this has to be, I think If I'm not mistaken, this has to be happening pre-DR0 So far. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> She's still a human being. Mm-hmm. That's not Hope's Peak's philosophy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's so ironic given what the school then tries to do with Hajime and the fact that it had to be Hajime specifically because he quote unquote didn't have any talent. Fucking hell, bro. Oh my god, that same fucking quote. いいこと言うじゃねえかその通りだ
無能は無能らしく才能を羨んでる暇あったら歯車みたいに生きていけって Jesus Christ お前みたいに才能がない人間はな何も考えずに What the fuck? だらだら毎日這いつくばって生きてんのが何を幸せなんだ That is a crazy That is somehow worse たくしばらく病院で寝とくかお前 Yo, Chisa cut. Yamete. Oh, shit. You kiss me. Hinata, good. I love it. Look at that determination in his eyes. Hinata, good. That's crazy. She just left it there? That was weird. Oh, she just sat there all day. That's crazy. Or the time was about to change. Like mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's gonna be She can do her job with Kyosuke and. Yeah, that's unnecessary. Sure. I'm here. <laughs> She's so cute. Yuchisa's my girl. I mean, at least you two, you three, I guess, can recognize that. Yeah, that's true. She does look like. It's ironic because we're seeing like dead people in the future art too, which is kind of funny. It is kind of interesting the order of people dying. That goes without saying, yeah. Yeah, I used to agree with that. What? Ah! He's right, <laughs> like, I don't want that dick. Potentially. That's fantastic, though. He's like, we both really admire him, so she got defensive for a second. That's a nice little compliment, like a nice little pseudo compliment. Yeah, is she waiting for Hajime and Hajime was taking forever to show up because Hajime's had a crazy day? Is he gonna say, nah, I think I'm good? Did this convince him? Did this convince him to become Izuru Kamakura? Because obviously, um, Tengon, Kazuo Tengon was trying to not necessarily talk about a bit, but more make him understand that it's his choice. Aww. Oh, she noticed the... I guess it would actually be right here. Nanami, think she's doing a decent enough job, yeah. Mm. You're also Chiaki Nanami. Yeah. Your ultimate isn't your entire identity. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and also doing it to try and be worthy of Chiaki is so sad. No. Damn, that's really depressing. Yeah, there it is. Good to see you, Jin. 
Yeah. Is that the steering committee? Hi. Fucking hell. Farewell to all futures. That's a crazy title, by the way. I will become everyone's hope. It's so... God, Hajime's story is, like, written so well because he, like... He, he kind of becomes, like, he becomes that in multiple different senses at multiple different points in the timeline. And that's not even getting to what the ending of this story is going to be when we come to Future Arc. Because, like I've said, Future Arc is going to, especially with the choice to split it up with all this, like, past stuff with, uh, uh, you know, the remnants of despair. There's no way in hell that Hajime slash Izuru doesn't make an appearance in the Future Arc. Again, it's kind of a matter of how many of those characters are going to have a role to play in the future arc. Is it just going to be... Is it just going to be, like, Hajime and maybe the ones that um, that won, for lack of a better term, DR2? Or is it going to be all of them? Because, again, that was left on a cliffhanger of what's going on with the rest of the uh, DR2 cast uh, at the end of DR2. So that's something to uh, potentially explore later in the anime on the future side but as far as the third episode of D of despair goes um really interesting stuff it definitely the tone is shifting the first two despair episodes for the most part were really fun this felt like the moment where the tone shifted towards uh darkness towards the zetsubo right and it's interesting because they're using Twilight Syndrome murder case as the shift, um, which makes sense. Uh, and we know that Twilight Syndrome murder case and that story of Twilight Syndrome murder case is not over. I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, cover the rest of Twilight Syndrome in Despair Episode 4. And, and that kind of gets resolved there or, you know, resolved, quote unquote, but leads to its end point. And then from there... Um, but, I mean, they did kind of, like, breeze over it because, you know, like, Sato, what happened to Sato happened to Sato. So I'm not sure if we're going to get to see some of the scenes that were implied in Twilight Syndrome Murder Case in anime form in the next episode of Despair. I, it, it's hard to tell. They might honestly, they might have honestly abridged it to that because we've already gotten Twilight Syndrome Murder Case in Danganronpa 2. So we don't actually need... We don't really need much. I think it, the, the more important thing is, hey, at this point in the timeline, this event happened. I feel like that's like the most important thing to get across in in this episode is that this is where Twilight Syndrome happens. And this is how it kind of fits into the timeline and how it, like I said, the big thing about Twilight Syndrome is it does feel like it shifted the tone. But what was interesting about episode three of Despair is we got no class. There was no... Like, we never got, like, the class all together with Chisa. Like, that never happened. Like, we had characters from the class. Like, we had, you know, some scenes with Pekko and Fuyuhiko. We got some action with Chiaki. Of course, you know, Hajime not being in the class, but obviously, um, you know, he was involved a lot in this episode. Like, we had different different potatoes like that uh, showing up in this uh, in this episode. But it was the first time in the Despair arc that we never got to just see the class together, having fun or otherwise. Uh, so that was also an interesting change for the third episode of Despair. Uh, so now we head, our, so we head back into the future arc. We head back into the uh, quote-unquote uh, current, uh, future slash current spot on the Danganronpa timeline. And um, yeah, one by one, they're dropping like flies. I don't really know what to expect yet. Like I said, we kind of left on a cliffhanger with... Um, Kyosuke and Makoto, which obviously needs to be resolved. There's other conflicts going on. Like I said, slowly but surely, boys are dying. And it's funny because, um, like I said, we're, again, they're doing this thing where we're getting, like, a, the focus on characters in the Despair arc that, are, that have already died in the Future arc, which is really funny. Like, obviously, Chisa, the first to go out in Future, but there's definitely a pattern, uh, a noticeable pattern already of people that have that have been the early victims in the future arc and their connections to Kyosuke. So very interesting there. 
But uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to uh, move on. I don't have too much more to say about that. That was an interesting episode, but admittedly a lot of it was um, contextualizing Twilight Syndrome and the actual dramatic events are things that we already know about from DR2. So not a whole lot to say there. So um, yeah, good stuff though. Interesting episode. Let's get back to the future arc. All right, let's check out episode four of the future arc in... Three, two, one, and play. Okay, Monokuba time. Uh, I didn't stop watching. Okay, we're gonna get a recap. Why not? That's one way to put it. God, those shots of the remnants. I've been over it already, but they're so cool to see the remnants as despairs. Fucking Chisa, man. It is cool that this is like all the competitors are like older in this story. But, like the youngest people here are like the ex despair, like the um the DR1 characters, the youngest people here, and they're I mean, and yeah, and they're like I assume like what early twenties. Maybe even a little older, like, it's, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I love that. Hagakure stuck outside because nobody likes him. I like how they're giving the recap of everyone that's still around, though. Interesting. Hmm. Dude, the transitions in the openings are really good. They're very seamless. I feel like more than a lot of anime are. I'm actually getting really hungry. I'm probably going to... I mean, I'm going to edit, render, and upload this video, but basically... The second I get a chance to go out and get something, I'm eating. Or, I don't know if I'll even go out, I might just eat something here. I, I'm gonna eat something once this is done. Huh. I do really like the detail of Junko and the reflection of the knife. And just like the little ways in which she's kind of like hiding and all these reflections. Right, because... This still all goes back to Junko. And I like how the OP represents that. I'm really curious what Hero's kind of role in this is gonna be, though. Like, the fact that he's outside, I'm sure, is gonna probably lead somewhere, although it would be really funny if that's just their way of keeping him alive. The number is ticking down. Who is a liar? Side future number four. That shit's crazy. Bro, you need to chill in both the past and the future. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, I just wanted to write a note down. No, sorry about that. I try, like I said, I tried to get all that out at the at the beginning in the first video, but sometimes there, I do want to note something. Sure, that makes sense, though. Yeah, I don't know if that was a good play, bro. Bro's ready to box. With a chair. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to do much, uh... Fucking animator, bro. And, like, Kyoko could probably fight, but not... Probably not against this guy. Jesus Christ! There's some wild drugs. Nice. Yeah, I don't know about that. Literal demon over here. Confectionery over there is uh, dropping bombs. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh shit. Yo, bro's about to cook. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Dude, the music's starting to pop off a little. What the fuck? Uh, Mr. Tengon, I need an explanation. Yeah. And now he's gonna go back and he's like, oh. Yeah, I'm sure. What the hell? Alright, well, we took care of uh, Boxer Boy here, Sakakura. これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ
いいよ交渉ならわしが行こう OK God's gonna suck when Ten Gun dies. He's totally gonna die, but he's gonna, he's gonna probably make it near the end. But what a badass. Speaking of badasses. Okitaka. <laughs> お前が襲撃者でないことが分かっている。じゃあどうして？この殺し合いで一番恐ろしい結末は何だと思う？そんなの、みんなが襲撃者に殺されるということだよ。違う。仮に俺が死んだところで襲撃が止まったとしよう、
雪染め君がなくなってから余裕がないぞ Dude, that's crazy. 終戦とは古い武器を朝日野君はい<笑> Yeah, he's got him pinned down そのまま彼を安全なところへ連れて行く。わかりました。ライン上君。はい。わしは君を超高校級の希望だと信じている。Oh shit。ライン上君。That's a big thing to say。君に託すぞ。Ah, he's expecting to die。なに？わしは宗形君と話がしたいだけだよ。Yeah, but there's another thing that's about to happen. Everyone's about to pass out. Minus one, at least. Anosa, Scotty, you can. Kimio, Kona Korosia game, Okosiona, Ningio, Domo. Mada Joe Hogaskana Sigiro. Mhm. Send you come a city in the German. Yeah. And she's not gonna. And that's the thing. They're gonna. They could use the fact that this games like this have been done before to mislead you as well. Then of course he escaped. That's not surprising. Yeah, yeah, all right. Now Sakakura's got a new objective. Munagata! Sakakura ka! Kase suru! Ore wa ii. Daga, nae ni makoto o oe. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, you follow orders, man. Ii no ka? So. Very well, you think you can take me one on one? Let's go! <laughs> Meanwhile, there's this other wild uh, situation. Luruka. Omae wa saki ni nigero. Yeah, this is wild. Oh, Jesus. I'd love to know the backstory about these three, though, in more depth. So they all got expelled, and they blame each other for getting expelled. But then, despite being expelled, their talents were worth being part of the Future Foundation. Yo. All things considered, the fight's not half bad. I mean, it's nothing special, but... Yo, bro fucking judo throwed the shit out of him. Judo threw? Fanaticism is... Yeah, that's the thing, like, how different does that make you from the other side? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that sound a lot like the other side? Just, just change one word? Yeah. Yo, that's insane. Jesus Christ. Yo!
They're gonna end the episode there, those motherfucker. Oh, okay, that works too. There's no way they kill off Kyosuke there. Yeah, you guys got far enough, don't worry. No problem. She's calculating. Mm -hmm. oh. Interesting. Aww. Interesting. Of course. It's gotta be the fucking donuts. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, Arnold. This will be an interesting fight. Why do those look like fucking missile launchers? What the fuck? Jesus Christ. Someone is fucking strapped? Ugh. Brutal. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Nani <laughs> わしのこの様だよ。君の方が奥が強かったようだな。俺はずっとあなたが吹抜けてしまったと。いや、Interesting. There's a lot of crazy people. In fact, I'd say almost all of you are. Your seven secret weapons. Okay, nerd. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wow! Girl, it's so fucking dramatic! That's crazy! Now, it was just a kick. I don't know how hard he kicked. I, yeah, I was assuming he's still... What the fuck? Oh my god. Yeah, that makes- that explains a lot. Holy shit! Whoa! 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 Together with a big gig of the Anaria. Like, what a weird line. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh. You know? That is super duper despair inducing. I agree. Uh. There we go. I, I wanted to uh, turn off the subs real quick. Just get this, get this uh, lovely shot in all its glory. What the fuck? So, a lot of things. Monica, fucking Monica, just Monica. Holy shit, she's here. Monica Toa. We talked about this quite a bit. Um, at the beginning of the 
we talked about the idea of Monica and, and the role that she could potentially play in this story. Um, we talked about how Monica is going to... Um, it's kind of, at its core, like, one of the most likely characters to act as the antagonist of this. I think the thing that, that shocks me here is that feels like a really early... Like, it's weird, right? Because I guess there's 12 future episodes, so we're... See, this is where it's weird to think about. As far as it, as it pertains to the future arc, we're a third of the way through now. But even still, I didn't expect to see Monica this soon. I felt like you kind of had to get into the Monica stuff, given the way uh, Ultra Despair Girls went. And, uh, I mean, I mean, this, if there was any doubt, I mean, this pretty much makes Ultra Despair Girls mandatory. Like, I mean, Jesus Christ, that's crazy. Um, we've talked about this before. I mean, Monica is an unbelievable villain. Obviously, Junko is my favorite character in this series. Um, but if you're just purely talking on, like, a villainous character um, that fulfills an antagonistic role, I mean, Monica has, like, a case, uh, even against my uh, my goddess. I mean, to be fair, we're kind of in the same boat as it pertains to how we feel about Junko, but, again, it's interesting because we don't know, like, what Monica's situation is going into this because we don't know exactly what happened with her and Nagito uh post UDG pre DR2 and then obviously whatever else but we know this actually lines up perfectly because we know that Monica is an incredibly smart girl she's a technological marvel she is um essentially responsible for the creation the mass production and creation of Monokuma um she's like I said, she's arguably, like, she has a similar level of fault in the tragedy to even Junko. Like, she is an incredibly huge piece to the Danganronpa puzzle. And there were so many revelations about that in Ultra Despair Girls. And it's crazy to see how it's all coming together here in DR3 with Monica's reintroduction into the Danganronpa universe. Um, wow. Like, I don't even know. Like, I just... You know, I felt like she had to show up, but I was just not prepared for her in that moment. But it makes sense that the ultimate therapist is essentially a bot of hers, which means that she's been at some point, she presumably took out the ultimate therapist and turned her and essentially turned her into her puppet. Um, now, that doesn't. Uh, that doesn't fully confirm it, but it does seem to... It, that does make does make it seem like the ultimate therapist is the traitor. Because the ultimate therapist isn't even the ultimate therapist anymore. Um, therapist, right? That's... I'm just making sure. Yeah, it is Gekko Gahara. Um, let me actually make a note about this. Oh, I love that she's wearing the, 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 the bears to the, uh, the, uh, Junko kind of, um, hair things. And that's the thing. If Nagito succeeded, Monica's personality should just be Junko. Like she should be, you know, if, if he succeeded more like Junko than even Junko was, which is a terrifying thought to imagine. Hard to tell how old Monica is supposed to be at this point. Like I said, I don't exactly know where this would fit it, you know, like what exactly the timeline situation is. I don't even know how old she was actually, now that I think about it, I don't even know how old she was in UDG. And if it was ever said, I don't recall. But obviously, um, still obviously young. Um, but I don't know if she'd be like, I just don't know exactly what the time frame is. Uh, not that it really matters, but... Monica being revealed this early is is the thing that's throwing me off a little because I she was kind of one of our main suspects for who would be running this whole thing was and it does seem like you know if she's controlling the ultimate therapist that would make us assume that she is the mastermind that she's controlling Monokuma that she's you know she's the one running the show here 
Um, and, and that, and that makes perfect sense. Like narratively, Monica makes as much sense as any character to be running the show here. But I do wonder if there's more to it because that felt like a little bit of an early reveal. Yet at the same time, it was probably one of the most predictable routes you could have went. So I get it. It's interesting though. That's really interesting. That episode was cool, but we lost, um, uh, we lost, uh, we lost Tengon, which is really sad. Um, that's really sad, but he is such a beast. Um, I'm curious if we'll, if we'll get any more of that conversation before he dies though, between Tengon and, um, Munataka, but, uh, whatever the case happens there, I'm definitely excited for that. Um, yeah, I mean, characters, like I said, we basically are losing a character every uh, future episode. You know, at least one has to die. That's kind of how it works, it seems like. Really interesting stuff, though. I'm uh, I'm really excited to see what we get to in the next Despair episode as well. Uh, that should be fun. I will say, the Monica reveal to me almost feels like a uh, a suitable cutoff point. And I don't usually do this, but... You know, I am, I'm a little low on time. I mean, I, I can definitely get the other episode done, but it would be kind of nice. So I'm just going to, I'm actually going to take a peek at my sets and I just want to see what my next set is. So my next set is, I end at 6F. So it's a three episode set next time. Um, do I want to turn the next set into a four episode set? I don't usually like to do this. I usually like to stick to my sets, but I don't know. I'm like really hungry and I do need to get this video like edited and stuff. You know what? I'm going to do a rare audible here. I'm going to, I'm actually going to call this a little early. I apologize for that, but Instead of getting a three-episode video, next time you'll get a four-episode video, so we'll be at the same spot. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I kind of want to just get this out, eat something, and, and not not really worry about it anymore. I really like, like, I wasn't planning to do it, but that Monica, like, ending, like, really hit for me. And I'm, like, kind of, like, I'm a little thrown off by it. Like, I feel like I, I, I want to think about it a little bit before I watch. Even though the next episode's Despair, I still want to kind of, like absorb that ending a little bit which also terrifies me because 4d is probably a crazy ending as well um so yeah i don't know like we'll see but that also means that next time i get to balance it out with two despair two future which is kind of nice um and yeah i think the way that that works out there will never be another video where i'm doing more future than despair because i'm ending at 4f and 3d here yeah because that would mean two and two yeah yeah the way it lines up i mean i guess there's kind of an exception but the way it works out we could do um we could do four episodes next time i apologize to my set maker because i'm sure the ending of episode four despair is crazy and probably is a great cutoff point but like I said, I'm a little I'm a little time crunched right now, and I'm also hungry, and all those things together, it kind of just combined with the fact that we got actually a really cool ending to this episode. Maybe maybe the best ending of an episode yet in in this, um, at least for me, because Monica was such an interesting character and so fucking demonic. Like Monica scares me. See. I want to say more than Junko, but then there's Danganronpa Zero. Danganronpa Zero, like, to me, oh, makes this so much more difficult. Because Junko is a menace in DR Zero. Fuck, dude. I don't know. It's actually pretty close. Because uh, Monica is a menace herself. Like, they, they deserve each other. It's hard to uh, see it any other way. As, as, as awful as um, everything about their dynamic is. But, God, dude, seeing Monica was crazy. 
Um, yeah, I think, like I said, I think I'm going to cut it here because I am really hungry and I want to get this video edited and everything. So I'll see you guys uh, soon. It shouldn't be too long. It should only be like a week or whatever before the next DR3 uh, video because I am posting daily because I have to. Uh, at least for the rest of July. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to get this video out and um, it should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to uh, what comes next in the Danganronpa universe. And I hope all of you guys are as well because I think it's going to be a really, really, really fun time. And I feel like we've gotten to the point it's weird because like I do feel like the future arc could really use more build up. Like I feel like the future arc could use probably the entire runtime of this show. Uh, whereas the Despair arc is probably fine as one core. But at the same time, it's like, if my choices were the future arc getting a full run or us getting a Despair arc, I'm obviously going to choose that Despair arc, even at the detriment to some extent of the future arc storyline. Um, just because it's so cool that we're getting to see something like this in anime form in the past. Um, it, it's weird, right? Like, I in a, in a perfect world, I kind of wish we'd have a longer future arc anime and still have a despair arc anime. And maybe, and maybe it could be broken up in a way where, like I said, you have the one core for despair. It was like, a, like I know that's very unorthodox for uh, current anime, um, but like a three core anime, and it's it, it's a deal where like two cores are future and one core is despair but it's still it could still be split up but like the despair arcs episodes could be more sprinkled in they're not like you know not in the same vein like maybe the despair arc episodes are like every other week right instead of every week or something weird like that but obviously stuff like that's too this was already cute enough um where they basically produced two different anime by the same studio to be releasing days apart from each other right and that's like a really clever and ambitious idea and i feel like if you that's about as cute as they could have gotten with it um unless i guess i guess i guess hypothetically you could have maybe had a two core one core and they just they they release simultaneously, but at some point the despair arc just ends in the future, and then it's just the future arc for the rest of it. But I feel like that's less cute narratively. So I don't know. It is what it is, though. That's not really our problem anymore. But uh, yeah, we're four episodes into future, three episodes into despair, seven episodes into dr. Three. Uh, we're a third of the way there in terms of video, and that's more or less close to what it is in terms of just episodes as well but video wise we're a third of the way there and um you know we'll see what happens i don't even know what i'm doing after this i i've like i said that's a whole mess of, of what's actually coming after dr3 and uh it'll be really interesting to see what i decide because one of the things mm, oh, my back's itchy but um one of the things that's even on the table is just finishing out this series entirely um but uh yeah i don't know I don't know. I I don't know why I'm still in the video here. If you guys want to support the channel, Patreon is down below in the description. If you're watching this in July 2024, there's a poll for future anime reaction series. Yada yada. Without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. Flame and Shark signing out. Hope you have a wonderful, fantastical day. And I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.